Hi there everyone that's interested in this sort of thing. This is the uh, promised follow-up video um, from the video I made when I unboxed my small Sebenza 21 black micarta inlay in single blade uh, double lug blue hardware pocket treasure that I waited uh, a good nine months and ten days for and I'm thrilled to have and I was so excited the day that it arrived and I filmed that video I knew I would leave stuff out and I intended to, to do a follow-up video and just talk about um, some of the things I might have forgotten or now since two weeks have passed um, give you some of the things I've learned um, and things that I like and even a couple of little things that uh, I dislike uh, about this knife but um, overall I'm absolutely loving it and then it turns out uh, totally unexpected to me two weeks ago <laughs> I ordered another uh, uh, Chris Reeve knife and um, it arrived this morning so uh, rather than wait I'm gonna unbox it as well it will not be as dazzling as an unboxing that uh, Corey did last night on the uh, Chris Reeve uh, Facebook groups um, but it's uh, another addition to my collection so I'll get to that in a minute um, so first, I just wanted to give you um, my thoughts on this knife and update you on what's going on. First of all, I have cut myself with it. It's almost healed uh, on the tip of my finger, drew some blood. So I guess it is officially, um, I'm officially the owner of this knife now. Um, the, um, the couple of things that blew me away about it um, is I was fully expecting to have to uh, break this in. When I got my first... Chris Reeve Sabenza, my very first Chris Reeve knife, the uh, 21 small with cocoa bowl inlays. Uh, the first time I opened it, it killed my thumb. Uh, it felt like there was sandpaper in the washers. It took uh, a lot of effort to get it open and the lock bar had a lot of stick to it and, and it was uh, kind of grinding uh, when I pushed it out. And it took me a while to learn how to push directly against it as opposed to try and sort of on an angle um and it took ages for this to work in and um it was a learning experience but it was also the the knife was definitely um uh, rough inside and i took it apart and i cleaned it and then improved things a little bit but it still took a lot of opening and closing for it to break in and now like i said this knife is three and a half years in my possession uh three and a half years from brand new and it's smooth as anything but this knife the new one came from the factory just as smooth as this one is after three years um you can drop the blade. Um, it's impressive. Um, I'm just so blown away. I think maybe since they're in the final days of manufacturing Sebenza 21s, um, uh, getting ready for to switch to uh, Sebenza 31 production, they are going all out to make sure they do a great job because um, the smoothness of this and the the day I got, got it out of the box um, and I just happened to press the lock and the the blade dropped down a little bit slower than free drop it was like a little bit hydraulic and now in the two weeks of of owning it it's now free dropping i have not opened this knife i have not um done anything to it um i don't see a need to it's it's so great out of the box um the only i i'm uh probably not going to take it apart until i um i replace the lanyard um uh that's my plan anyway but there's no need i mean it's just so so smooth um and slicing i don't know if this will work now but but when it was out of the box this is a, a grocery receipt and uh the day i took it out of the box i tested cutting a grocery receipt and it could yeah it's still doing it maybe a little bit of tearing but the first day it was able to slice receipt paper um, with no tearing um now i've been using it for two weeks and it kind of starts with a cut and then does a tear um i wish i could have i wish i had filmed the first day just how um how sharp it was um from the factory um but now uh 
I have not sharpened it. I, I don't need to. Um, I am going to give it a strop sometime soon. Um, but I wanted to film uh, me trying the receipt paper uh, in front of you um, before I strop it. Yeah, that's tearing now. Uh, opportunity lost. I should have filmed it the day I took it out of the box. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, really uh, impressed with that. Um, so two weeks in the pocket. Um, already the um, sandblasting, uh, bead blasting surface is starting to smooth out. Um, I knew uh, it wouldn't last. I, I mentioned in the, in the unboxing video how, how uh, these things smooth out pretty quickly. Um, the micarta, the white streaks on the micarta are starting to go darker where they get a lot of uh, contact with my, my hand oils, uh, finger skin uh, oils. Um, and I knew that was going to happen, but um, still pretty slow. I mean, and, and the blue on the thumb studs, just the tips. I don't know if you can see in this light, but they're just starting to to uh, dull on the tips or the blue starting to go away. And I don't expect uh, within a month or two, that'll probably be shiny. Uh, and I discussed my reasons for um, wanting the blue hardware in my original video. Um, I will say, and I don't know if I made it clear in that first video, that the blue th double studs is why the, the knife took three extra months um, to produce. Um, I do not know if it's because it was a double stud or double blue stud, but normally a micarta inlaid Sabenza 21, uh, and I assume once Sabenza 31 production gets rolling, uh, the the lead times will be about the same, um, is supposed to be uh, six months. But because I did a special alteration, the blue hardware double lug, that added three months. Um, and I also want to mention, because I mentioned uh, Alicia from Chris Reeve Knives, who I spoke to when I was dealing with my order. Um, in the last video, I called her Alyssa, and I just wanted to correct that. Her name was Alicia, and she is a customer service at Chris Reeve Knives, and she's great. Um, she also, anybody that watched the tie lock video about the blade uh, variants uh, on tie locks, um, she was the one that I uh, dealt with um, figuring that out with her. So um, I just wanted to make sure I was mentioning her name correctly, because she deserves uh, respect for the job she does. She does an, a great job of uh, customer service there and those of you that order or deal with Chris Reeve knives you'll know because you've spoken to her on the phone um, so uh, yeah so this is getting lots of pocket time like every day since I received it uh, including the day I received it um, I'm actually uh, also uh, I would be interested to find out how many are of these actually exist with blue hardware um, I've heard of a lot of people ordering um, inlaid knives with wood inlays that come with the gold hardware, ordering it with silver because they, they don't like the look of the anodizing uh, wearing off. Um, but as I mentioned, I particularly wanted the blue anodizing and I don't mind that it's going to wear off. I feel like I'm getting sort of a bonus. I, I get to appreciate having the blue and then I'll get to appreciate it once it's gone <laughs> and having a more silver look to, to it. Um, I, I also wanted to address uh, customs uh, because this shipped incredibly fast from Idaho to uh, Ottawa, Canada. Um, literally left Idaho on a Thursday and was in my hands on a Monday morning. Uh, and that includes going through customs. Now, I know this is holiday season, so um, the uh, customs people and Canada Post people are working uh, overtime. Uh, and they're open on days that they normally aren't. Uh, so that probably affected things. Um, but also I spoke with Alicia about customs because I had heard on a Canadian knife and gear group um, that uh, someone had had trouble with uh, customs, getting a Chris Reeve back from spa treatment. And um, I have not had trouble. I've had one knife, the tie lock, come from Chris Reeve uh, after... Uh, being sent there by the seller uh, for spot treatment and then sent to me uh, and then this brand new one and in speaking with Alicia 
in the last five years, the, there's only been one incident um, with a Chris Reeve knife being held up at Canadian Customs, and that was the one that uh, someone posted on on the Canadian Knife and Gear Group in September. Um, so in general, uh, for the most part, there should be no trouble shipping uh, from the U.S. Um, that said, um, I am, you know, you, you will save uh, some money on customs fees uh, if you order your Chris Reeve knives from a dealer in Canada. And as I mentioned in the first video, the big brother to this knife has been ordered through Thunderbird Gear in Canada through Steve, um, who owns Thunderbird Gear. Um, they, he, he can take a uh, custom order, uh, for example, double blue thumb lugs, and um, they will ship to him th uh, through and then to you um, in Canada and you don't have to worry about the customs experience. So um, I will definitely go that way unless I um, want a unique graphic uh, or custom unique graphic. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's a couple years down the road if I go that way. Anyway, I wanted to mention the customs um, thing because I know it's a very big concern for Canadians ordering knives from the U.S. and um, with Chris Reeve knives it seems to be a 99.99% uh, not an issue and I also bought um, two my second tie lock from uh, Corey uh, who <laughs> again did the unboxing of the spectacular Russian unique graphic uh, knives last night um, uh, from uh, Texas and sailed through customs, no problem. Um, so um, hopefully uh, that'll put people's minds at, at rest, but I mean, contact me if you want more details, but there isn't, there isn't much more to say than, than I have had a good experience with, with shipping from the U S now, this is a particular type of knife, Chris Reeve knives. If you're ordering uh, gravity assist uh, or spring assist knives, that could be a different story. But as far as the rules go um, and the way the rules are being applied, there should be no issue with anything that Chris Reeve puts out. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about the two things that um, I dislike about this knife, and I don't know if you'll even be able to see it in this light, but I'll try and get the blade up close. Um, on the spine of the blade, just where the swedge uh, thins right down, there's this point on the swedge where um, the, the spine thins to almost nothing, and then it widens a little bit more towards the tip. And at the point where the two edges of the swedge on the sides meet, there's a little dark spot. And um, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, it's just my taste, but I kind of want, I would like to see the whole thing shine on the top all the way down. And it's just like a little dark cloud right about there. And like I said, I'm turning it. So hopefully you can see it. I unfortunately cannot see the camera um, from where I'm sitting. Um, so uh, hopefully it catches in the light here and you see that there's that little dark spot um, and I think with time, it's eventually going to just work itself out and it's really not much. And I guess it doesn't really bug me that much, uh, to be honest, but it's there and I notice it and, um, you know, uh, it, it does, uh, when I do notice it, I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's not a perfect shine all the way down the spine of the blade. Um, the other thing that I didn't know, um, because I've taken the lanyards off of my other Chris Reeve knives, is that um, the lanyard, when it swings up, can be frayed, is at risk of being frayed by the blade, because it comes in contact with the blade when uh, it hits the back there, um, or hits the maximum uh, lift, I guess. Um, so that'll be solved once I uh, install the uh, Jekyll to hide black spacer that I'm waiting for. Um, but um, it's just something that um, I hadn't been aware of um, that that would have been an issue. Um, but it also, uh, so, I mean, that's just a little thing that I noticed. Um, but it also helped me notice that just how precise the manufacturing is here because if you look at the lanyard pin and I rotate the lanyard that pin is moving and I cannot 
detect it moving from above. I mean, it's perfect. It looks like it's just stationary. The reflection um, doesn't move. Uh, there's nothing to my eye uh, that shows me that that piece of metal is rotating when I do that. And that's precision manufacturing. I mean, just perfection. Um, so that impresses me. And I'm really, you know, I like that. Um, and um, another thing is the jimping that I wasn't aware of. Um, I didn't know that on the, um, the clip point, um, uh, 21, or at least the smalls, um, it's different jimping. Um, there are, I actually went and counted, there are 13, uh, bumps or 13, uh, ridges in the jimping on the, um, uh, the drop point. And, uh, there are 15 on the Insingo. And, um, it actually grips tighter. Um, they're finer, but um, it actually gives a bit more grip. And I uh, mentioned in my first video how I like the jimping on the uh, in, um, the Incosi, or the I have a 25, but the uh, Incosi has this much more sort of uh, heavy duty uh, jimping. Uh, and I didn't realize that. Um, I would be much more pleased with with this how it grips my thumb. Not that there's any issue with with this one, but unless my my hands are really clean, um, uh, this does slip a little bit. Um, or if I rub it a lot, and then it starts to stick. Um, but um, just something that I hadn't been aware of, and I'm sure a lot of people in the collecting community or the Chris Reeve knife ownership committee uh, community are aware of it, but I wasn't. And, uh, um, I found it very interesting and I was very pleased to discover that, um, <laughs> even though it was a surprise. Um, and the last thing is I had a conversation a few months back, someone said about new micarta versus old micarta and, um, described it to me. And I didn't realize that there were it was a new micarta or old micarta. I thought it was just variant in the way that it was cut or, or laid in. But uh, I guess um, when I got my Sabenza 25, the micarta had the white streaks on it that are more wavy um, as opposed to the new one, which are much straighter. Um, they feel the same. Um, maybe, maybe the new micarta is a little bit smoother. It feels like almost like soap. Um, uh, although, th yeah, they're pretty close. I, I, uh, these ones are just a touch smoother. And as time goes by, the, the, the white streaks eventually fade anyway. And if you look at this new micarta under magnification or really close up, you'll see that it is wavy. It's just that the waves are, are, uh, smaller. Um, and it makes no difference to the performance of the knife, at least not to me. Um, so it's an aesthetic thing. And like I said, these will fade, uh, the stripes will fade the more pocket time and the more use this gets. It's only been used for two weeks. Um, and I also found from cleaning my Sabenza 25 is that um, you can restore that whitish uh, streak if you want, uh, if you wash the knife, um, um, it comes back. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to mention about this. Uh, like I said, it's in my pocket all the time. It's showing uh, just the first little signs of uh, wear. Um, like I said, the, the sparkly sandblasting, and it is quite sparkling, especially at night if I put it under incandescent light, you can see the sand um, bead blasting sparkles. Um, but they're starting to go, and I, already this is feeling smoother than it was two weeks ago, where you actually felt that sort of gritty, um, brand new out of the box feel. Um, so that's why I'm glad I made a video, so I can, when I watch the original video, I, I remember exactly what it felt like when it took it out of the box. But uh, um, not a moment of uh, regret over the the long wait and uh, and the choice I made for to be my go to pocket knife for the rest of my uh, my life. Um, really pleased. Now I'm just uh, 
interested to see when its big brother will get here. And uh, I'm suspecting it's going to probably be one of the last Sabenza 21s ever made um, as we go forward. So maybe in the next month or two. Uh, but let's see what uh, I, I uh, got in the mail today. This, uh, so bear with me uh, as I open it because um, I know the camera, uh, I can't fit the box under the camera that well. But um, if you'd asked me last uh, Friday uh, if I was going to order another Chris Reeve knife this year, if you, uh, I would have said no, because uh, I've got two on order, the big brother to this one, plus the uh, Sabenza 31 um, that will come sometime next summer is my guess. But um, there was some news in the Chris Reeve community uh, this weekend, and uh, it made me... Um, decide to pull the trigger on another knife. And um, this is a knife that I was considering to be my, what I would purchase next year. Um, uh, because I, I kind of wanted uh, the blade shape and um, uh, I just thought I would have time to get it. But um, the thing is, um, They've discontinued this knife, and it's the uh, Nyala. Um, so, and this is my first fixed blade from Chris Reeve. Um, so, uh, I checked uh, with Thunderbird Gear, but they didn't have the one I wanted. So, I went to another Canadian dealer, Warriors and Wonders, who had... Um, they happen to have two in stock, and I believe they might still have one. So, if you're watching this and you want one... Uh, get on it, guys, because <laughs> this, this might uh, be in short supply to buy a, a brand new one. Um, so, um, let's just uh, have a quick look at this, and I don't want to take up your, your whole day with the video. Um, so, oh, that's interesting. Care notes. Um, yeah, ne like I said, never unbox a, a, a fixed blade, so um, we shall see. Um, oh, it's... Uh, yeah, made July 22nd, uh, 2019, a month before my birthday. Um, so, it, and, you know, the usual stuff, sticker and warranty card. I got to get online and fill out my warranty uh, for both for my uh, Sabenza 21 in Singo and now for my Nyala. Um, but let's have a quick look at this. Um, and, uh, yeah, nice. Uh, no cloth, I notice, huh? That's okay. I have spares. Oh, and it comes right in the sheath. Oh, a little bit rubbery feel, but very nice thick leather. Holy smokes. Um, yeah. Very nice. Uh, and I've always wondered what this is. This handle's going to feel like. Um, ooh, it's in there tight. Very good fit. Well, there you go. That is a thick... Thick blade. I know it looks thick online and on videos I've watched, but I just never realized. Um, yeah, but um, this is going to be an alternative to my uh, Groman's uh, Canadian belt knife or Russell belt knife or what I would call a Canadian jump knife or pararigger knife or combat engineer knife, um, which I have. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that someday. Um, and I'm actually a bit surprised the handle in person compared to what I've seen in photograph or what it looks like to me in photographs or and in video this is more slender than I thought um I thought it was a thicker handle um still feels really good in the hand um yeah now <laughs> let's try the Let's try the receipt paper. <laughs> I don't expect this to be... Oh, well, there you go. Okay, that's exactly... I'm glad I, I, th I thought to try it right now in front of the camera. Because there you go. It's it's just pushing right through uh, a grocery receipt, which is about the thinnest paper, um, you know. And that's exactly what my uh, Sabenza 21 in Singo uh, small was like two weeks ago. Um, but like I said, it's been in my pocket for two weeks and being used for everything. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I ended the video, uh, with what I was, uh, struggling with at the beginning. Uh, so I can, I could explain, uh, the shape that, it, that this was in when it arrived. Um, so, 
uh, yeah, the, the, the final message here is the quality of, of the Sabenza 21s that are coming off the line, or at least the one that got sent to me um, uh, and manufactured in November of 2019 um, was excellent. I mean, just uh, no break-in required, super smooth, um, super sharp out of the box, and I couldn't be happier. Like I said, my two little flaws is the little dark spot, and yeah, and the Nyala does not have a dark spot there uh, with the in-single blade. So it's just a little feature of mine. And depending on the light, I mean, right now the sun has come out completely and I can barely see it. So I have imagined with a little bit more wear, that's going to go away. Um, but there we go. So <laughs> two weeks ago, uh, I didn't own a single in single blade and now I've got two. Um, but I had to jump on this because I knew it was a knife I wanted in the future. And it turns out there is no future for brand new, uh, uh, Nialis. So, uh, managed to find one that was on the shelf. Um, Anyway, uh, I imagine, unless the big brother to this one arrives in the next couple weeks, this will be the last video I do before Christmas. So have a Merry Christmas out there, uh, all you uh, Chris Reeve knife uh, enthusiasts and knife enthusiasts in general, and anyone that happens to be interested in this. I hope I didn't bore you, um, but I like thinking about my knives and examining them and sharing what I learned. So... Um, have a great day, have a great afternoon, and I'll see you in the next video, whenever that is. I'm so happy with this stuff.